Here's an update on some of the modifications I'm doing to my 1350 refit build. Looking at the lower saucer, I already showed you the engineering hatch and the greeblies that I constructed for that. But I decided to scratch build the uh, airlock uh, compartment that you see open in Star Trek The Motion Picture that uh, first Spock and then Kirk exit through. Yes, I've got the photo etch set, but I always like to see if I can replicate it with just uh, styrene myself, and I think I did a pretty decent job with it. So I'm going to put a backing behind the opening for the door so that the door will have a recessed look to it. But uh, hopefully you can see that I managed to replicate the side uh, windows there to allow some illumination in there. But I'm uh, pretty happy with it. What I've done to add a little bit of detail to it is some styrene tubing, uh, some really, really thin stuff. This is uh, number 211 right here. And that's uh, allowed me to get some decent extra detail within there. So happy with how that's turning out. I also, like I said before, was opening up this panel and you can see I've got that uh, inner space uh, detailed as well and painted. I don't have it locked down yet, I just have it taped. Let me show you what I did with this. So I just created this little box structure out of styrene and the roofing to it is the corrugated siding styrene that I picked up uh, a long time ago from the railroad hobby shop here in town. And then you see that I've attached uh, some fiber optic to it to illuminate two spots inside that will cast light across that corrugated uh, roofing. And I'm going to run the uh, light, probably just power it off of one of the uh, extra soldering points on the strip lighting that I've got in there strip LEDs and that'll give a, a constant lighting source to it. Also notice that I got a nice little curve on this so that it fits snugly and how I achieved that is I just took the sandpaper and laid it over that part of the inner part of the saucer and just ran the piece over it until I got the same curvature. Very simple little solution there. So that will work out very well. And then on the uh, airlock, I keep forgetting the name for that for some reason, I also cut a piece of the corrugated roofing and then you can see I also laid a strip of that uh, styrene tubing on the end of it to ensure that I don't have a light leak at this lower end and it also makes sure that the top piece will line up there straight so that on the inside the corrugation 
See if I can get that there so you can see it. You can see that the corrugation lines are going to be oriented correctly. Okay? And I think that's just going to look really, really nice. Now the next thing I need to do with the sensor dome area, I've already light blocked it and put a, uh, a top coat on it. And I've glued in three of the four uh, pieces that I've already painted and left clear where the light source is going to be. I can't find the back one right now. I don't know where I placed that. I'm going to have to bust into one of my extra kits on this. I uh, bought an extra one of these uh, 1350 refits uh, from an eBayer at a really ridiculously cheap price because it was a partially started kit and the guy really didn't know what he was doing and had glued things together wrong and really screwed up the model a lot. Uh, so I should be able to find the replacement part uh, for that here if I can't find it here on my desk somewhere but I've been looking around and looking around and I just don't know what I did with this back piece. But uh, just like I did with the uh, bridge section, uh, putting the SMDs in there, I'm going to hook up singular SMDs right in the centers of those windows here too to broadcast the light out. Uh, and then for the back one, because there are three lights, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put uh, three SMDs, one for each of those lights there. Uh, and I'll either do that with three SMDs or if the spacing is correct, I've got that wonderful little nice thin LED tape and this comes in sections of three that you can cut. And so I'll lay that across and see if those will line up. And I've got somebody calling me right now, so I'll take a break from this. Okay, back at it. Uh, that was a return call from uh, a campground uh, about 50 miles away that I wanted to uh, take my kids to uh, in late July. But uh, despite COVID, all the campgrounds up there are completely booked for the entire month. So, so much for that. So what I'm looking at now, I'm going to cut that piece to see if it will fit. Uh, got these from HDA Model Works. Uh, again, if you haven't ever uh, ordered from Jerry there, uh, you, you really ought to get to know Jerry. He's a really good guy. Uh, very rarely does he make a mistake on an order, and when there is a mistake, he very promptly gets you the thing that got missed from it or whatever it was. Uh, Jerry's just a really great guy, uh, and it's nice to have someone like that uh, out there making sure that we can get the kind of supplies we need. Uh, but these are the uh, 805 LED strips, which is this uh, very, very thin type, which I have found extremely useful. They were kind of uh, annoying to deal with at first because it was a bit more challenging to get the solder onto the uh, negative and positive poles. But after doing this for a while, you, you get used to it. And uh, now I really enjoy using this stuff for those small areas where it is hard to get the larger size tape. Uh, and these put out a ton of light. Um, so you're, you're not going to be missing anything at all uh, by using the smaller type. Uh, I think I've got one of these wired. And I, yeah, I have the back ends of these ready to go. Here, let me show you how bright these can get. So I've got my power source set at 9 volts. So there's a string that I've got ready to go uh, for this kit as well. And there's at 9 volts. 
There's 12. And you see down at uh, seven and a half, they're barely lighting up. But uh, those things put out a ton of light and uh, they're nice and small for lighting up what you need to light up. I have found these extremely useful uh, for lighting up the hangar bay in the 1350 original series kit, uh, especially just running a strip of them, uh, like a strip of six, right down the center of that hangar bay uh, so that the end one hangs off at the end to light up the uh, uh, approach control room at the top of the hangar bay doors. Uh, you can also, I've done this in other ones, uh, take a string of six and lay it on either side in the two little grooves of the hangar bay where the actual lights are uh, and those illuminate uh, very well there too. But uh, having this nice thin strip, it fits right down in that trench along the top of the uh, original series hangar bay. And again, it, it leaves that last one hanging out enough to light up uh, that sensor dome and also the, uh, the command room uh, above the hangar deck. Okay, And then the one at the further end and I think actually the two at the further end uh, light up the three, uh, uh, I guess they're like navigation lights, the three right in a row on the spine of the secondary hull. Uh, so there's, there's how bright these can be for you, just at nine volts. And again, there's, there's 12. A uh, ton of light produced by these. So what I'm gonna do with the 1350 refit kit is instead of uh, carving out the walls here along the edge so that light can actually get through to illuminate the uh, windows along the edge here. The trench right in there, this LED tape will just fit right down in there. and. Therefore, you will not have the, uh, the bright lights individually there uh, that you can uh, sometimes see. Uh, because it'll be recessed down in this trench, the light will be broadcasting up indirectly and thus illuminate all the windows and you will not see the individual lights like you would if they were on the back here uh, and like you often see uh, for the warp grills or the nacelles. So I've cut a little strand of three right there and I can lay that whoop, right into place here. Easier said than done while I've got the video camera on. Okay. And you see that that strand of three, those three LEDs will line up with the clear part and the three clear sections of that clear part. So that'll be my solution to the back here instead of putting three SMDs in there is I'll just use this LED tape. And that, uh, that'll solve the problem wonderfully. So that's what I've got going on right now. Um, oh, I don't think I showed you this before. Uh, for the engineering section that's, uh, that can be seen now, I've decided to put some uh, lights into it to help highlight it. So let me show you what I've got there. So I've got a blinking yellow, and then I've got a static red, and that'll help illuminate that area just to make it a bit more interesting. Now let me show the last thing I'm doing with the top of the saucer for that. It's 
so I have the hatch itself removed and what I'm going to do is I have fabricated this open hatch okay and this I'm going to put on like that and it'll obviously be some kind of a uh, hydraulic system uh, because it obviously will not just flip straight down like that because then it, it wouldn't work correctly but the idea is that uh, these extensions uh, constrict down as it closes uh, so that it will fit into the space but that's how I'm going to have that access hatch reveal itself uh, thing in my last video about this I was talking about uh, having the hatches uh, maybe partially open like this underneath uh, but to me that just seemed eh, eh, maybe but doesn't look as good as if I have something physically sticking up uh, it just that just seems a bit more pronounced and interesting to look at instead of having it being a uh, hidden piece underneath because then there's the whole thing okay does it slide all the way over and then come back up into the space what is the whole engineering to that um, yeah it would be fine I guess but this this seems to be a, a better solution to it uh, so again the what I what I did to make this piece as I showed before is I had scratched out the shape itself with some printer paper and a pencil then trace that onto a piece of styrene flat styrene cut out the piece sanded it smooth and everything and then I started playing around with okay how do I make these articulation arms and the simplest solution was square tubing okay and I just picked a certain width to cut uh, and just cut it off cut my two pieces that way glued them on then after they were dry I cut out the back piece which left me with that C shape then I cut uh, one more piece from this and then just bisected it to get those two L pieces and then cemented those together but to strengthen them I then cut some thinner material to lay over that to just give it some extra strength so very very simple solution and I like that that's going to make that part of the kit just that much more interesting and it will be open further so that you can actually see inside all of that detail work I did that will be shown underneath okay so that's what I've got going here so here's the latest on lighting up the sensor array got the three light LED strip for the bottom then I've got individual SMDs going all the way around for the others and that's going to generate some pretty good broadcast onto the dish. So I'm happy with how that's turned out. So just like I did with the bridge component, so too with this. No modifications to it. Just making use of these smaller SMDs. That's it.